All right, let's turn in our Bibles quickly. And maybe what we're going to start from is in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, we're going to read from verse 26. Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. So this is what the Bible says. And this is the principle of God's word. And, you know, this is the principle of God's word. And I explained a lot of this during Wine Press Conference. And you might need to go back and listen to the message and see how the message can help you personally. So Mark chapter 4 in verse 26. And the Bible says that so... It's the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and it should sleep night and day and the seed should spring up and he know it not how. We explained to you previously, one of the key things we explained was that the way God works, everything starts with the seed and the seed is the word of God. That the word of God is the ultimate seed. So if you need the miracle, the seed of the word is what to produce the miracle within your spirit and within your system all right so the bible says this that so when the seed is planted the man will sleep rise night and day and the seed shall spring and grow up and he know it know how verse 28 says when the streets are manifesting it's going to be first the air it, it said the air will bring forth of itself first the blade then the air and after that the full corn in the air verse 29 but when the fruitful is, is brought forth immediately he puts in the sickle and he pulls the harvest that is come. And what the word of God is teaching us very powerful as a principle here. He said when it's the time for full manifestation to come. That what happens at that time is that when you are praying for that thing. And you are in a season of harvest that God will give you a sickle. You will have a connecting idea. You will have an ideology. You will have a concept. Something you have to do that will pull in the harvest. And the reason I'm saying so is this, because when a lot of Christians pray about something, one of the things you want to learn is that in the place of prayer, God begins to give you an idea, a concept, an intelligence, and is hoping that that intelligence would translate into an action you take physically that will bring about results. And let me explain what that means. It's possible for God to do something in your life and you don't receive it. How do I know? The Bible speaks of a man that was lame in his feet. The Bible says man was lame in his feet. It was important in his feet. And the Bible says, as Paul began to teach, that Paul perceived that the man had faith. And Paul told the man, rise up. Watch this now. The man had faith. He did not need Paul to tell him to get up. So, if Paul had kept quiet and he had walked away, the man will have left the meeting paralyzed, not realizing that within his body was the power to make him get up. And that's why every time I pray for the sick, I always say something to them. Do what you could not do before. The reason is this. The way you are going to activate the power you have received is by putting it to work. Now, the same way that um, to healing, that appears to so, if you're running a business, and I give an example of someone in the second service, I said, this person really believed he had received in his business, but nothing changed in his business. And God told him that you have to take a step of faith. And he said, what's a step of faith? And God says, if I've grown your business and you're going to have the sales that you want, your step of faith is going to be simple. That, what is the step of faith? Your step of faith is going to be simple. That you're going to, you're going to make people know about your product because what you believe is that you're still at a magnitude. So the person went and began to do publicity. Long and short of the story, aggressive Long and short of the story, the sales of the company moved by three to five hundred percent, and that's because it put in the sickle. So what is a sickle? When you pray and you know God has answered your prayer, there is always a connecting idea. There's something you have to do that is a bridge of bringing that which you have received in the spirit into the flesh.
All right. So, in the teaching today, one of the things I want to do is to begin to talk about one of the methods or channel in which God uses to bring about growth and breakthrough. What is a breakthrough? A breakthrough is a, is a, is a total change. It's a significant achievement that removes a barrier. So, someone can be growing and, I mean, let me give a bank. A bank can tell you that we made 60 million profit, 80 million profit. That's wonderful. But by the time the bank changes status from a microfinance bank to a commercial bank, that's a total breakthrough. A breakthrough is a significant, it's not just an achievement, it's a significant achievement that totally, totally removes a barrier. And why am I saying that? Everybody is desiring some kind of growth in their life. There are people under the sound of my voice that have these concrete goals in their life. They have these concrete desires in their business. They have these concrete desires and they're wondering how exactly will I grow? So I want to talk to someone here that is a business startup person and you're wondering that from starting the business, how am I going to grow this business from the initial capital of 15 million to 150 million? There are some people that it's not even that big. You're just wondering, I'm just starting from the scratch. I have this talent. I have this gift. How do I grow from these 200,000 to 5 million? So we're talking about how does God grow us and cause about a breakthrough. And for some other people, what is going to happen is that what they're asking for is not monetary base. What they're asking for is a miracle in their health. What they're asking for is a miracle in their body. And they're asking that, how will this HIV be healed? How will this cancer dissolve in my body? How will I also have a child of my own or receive a particular kind of healing? Some people are believing God for what they're believing God for has to do with a marital kind of breakthrough or a family success. So what I'm saying is that when God wants to do a breakthrough in your life, how does God do it? The reason is simple. If you do not recognize what God is doing, you may miss it. Luke chapter 19 verse 41. That's a good place to start. If you do not recognize what God is doing in your life, you may miss it. Luke chapter 19 verse 47. 47, not 41. 47. Let me just check in my Bible. Yes, verse 44. The Bible says, And ye shall lay within the ground, and thy children with thee, and shall not leave in one stone upon the other. Why? It says, you're going to have a terrible experience. Why? Because thou knowest not what? The time of your visitation. God says that there was a time I stepped in to make sure that you can have your marital miracle and you missed it. There was a time I stepped in to make sure that you can have that business breakthrough and you missed it. And, so, and the reason why you missed it was simple. You simply did not know what? The time of what? Your visitation. So what I'm teaching this morning is that when God wants to grow you, when God wants to give you a breakthrough, how does he exactly grow? How does he really grow you? So that when you see it, because let me tell you something. A lot of you don't understand that attacks are sometimes used as God's weapons for growth. You will think in the office they are fighting against you. But you don't understand that if they did not crucify the king of glory, you will not rise up again. Glory to God. Some of you don't understand that they must sell you into slavery because you are going to Egypt. So in the office... What you see is the gang up. But if you have the eyes of the spirit, you will understand that behind the gang up is an orchestration of God for a further and bigger testimony. Some of you, what you see is a heartbreak. The heartbreak is to save you for something else. <laughs> I was listening to a story and, you know, this guy was dating this very lovely lady and after some time they broke up. And <laughs> when they broke up, they met in an outing and the guy just passed on with his wife. And the, the girl that was dating before felt so disrespected that uh, even if I'm not breaking up again, we're not enemies. Hello. And all those things. Her friend wanted to talk to the guy. He said, no need. And all those things. 
two years after they saw. And when they saw, <laughs> the, the guy now spoke. He said, ah, he just met the lady. Thank God you didn't marry me. Oh. And then he said, what do you mean by that? I mean, she was disgusted. He said, because you have suffered. He said, even me, I didn't know I was a useless man. He said, what happened? He said, ah, she been married three years ago. He said, I know you married three years ago. He said, we had a breakout. My father-in-law came to settle it. As my father-in-law was settling it, he was saying what I didn't like. I got so angry, I carried him and slammed him. <laughs> we are just laughing. When I was telling my this story, she said, ah, it's not strange. Some people slap their mother-in-law. The standard. Yeah. Pa! Mama, how are you talking about it? Just slap their mother-in-law. I just remember, I'm sorry, but they slapped the mother-in-law. That lady, when she heard that, she said she just imagined that it was her father. That someone carried and slammed at his age. The reason I'm saying, let me tell you, the reason I'm saying so to you is that I know you see the attack, I know you see the hardship, but can you take a minute and see what God is doing? And this is what I will say. The Bible says this, if they had known, they would have not crucified the king of glory. Why? By crucifying the king of glory, what happened? They brought about an explosion. The attack that was designed to kill you is what to bring about your testimony. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. I said glory to God. So let's go ahead and keep teaching. So how does God grow us? And I'm saying so because sometimes what you think is the hardship, what you think is the pain, what you think is the challenge, as you got raw material. In my personal life, the person that did me the worst evil in my life, I knew them in my head. And it was in my secondary school. One of my teachers. He should have been the closest person to me, but for some reason he just didn't like me. I'm telling you, he just didn't like me. I remember categorically... When one day after school, I'd left school, I saw him again. And he called me to the corner. He said, I want to apologize to you. He said, even me, I cannot explain why I didn't like you. He said, but see what is happening now. Just accept that I was a trainer. And the truth was that when I went through it, it was painful. But I thank God for him. Because there are certain stamina, perspective, paradigm. I would not have now if I didn't have that person hack to me in a harsh way. I was raised, I'm, I'm the last one of my mother, so naturally, you know, I'm very baby. You know, last ones are the baby, look for somebody. That man, by the time he finished with me, I lost all those qualities. I lost those qualities. But God was using it. So, the guy that, the guy that betrayed and defrauded you, God knows what he's doing. See, once you have something, you will not be built. Once there's some, nothing, you will not say, in Christ they don't I trust. He will start with you. That's why God loves to make us humble before he starts using us. Yeah. Glory to God. So how does God grow us? The first thing he does is that God uses relationships to train us and enlarge us. God uses relationships to train us. So when you pray for growth, what God sends you is relationships. Many of you need friends that when you buy a brand new car, they don't say hallelujah, they say well done. Because it's not a big deal. Not that they're not rejoicing, but in their level, that is not a testimony. You come and bring a brand new G-Wagon and say this is the same, I'm happy for you. Because at their level, and you will not look at uh, what is going on here. And God is just using them to stretch you. Not friends that you buy, <laughs> you buy to that Corolla and say, Hey, Corolla, let's go to Kinox and celebrate. How much is how much is celebration? <laughs> Glory to God. Those are the kind of relationships people have. So when, when God, I'm telling you, see, you understand. <laughs> One time, one of my friends told me, I mean, someone I, I knew, close. He said, Pastor Blanche, thank you for all you do for us. You know, this and this. He said, will you have time to come and bless my house? I said, yeah, yeah, He said, I'll just to give you a synopsis, the house, so I bought it for four point something million pounds. 
Ah. <laughs> you know, you hear some things, you calculate. Ah. Ah. He doesn't earn 4.5 million pounds as salary. He bought a house of 4.5 million pounds. Ah. Where this came from. And that's not the only house he has. You need relationships that say, ah. <laughs> one of my mentors told me, one of my mentors went to see his mentor. He said, when he went to see his mentor, he was giving him some testimony, so he was feeling as if, ah, a pastor, this is, sorry, his mentor, this is going on well. He said, come, come, come. He said, come to my house. When they are coming, when they came to his house, he said, sit on that table. He just bought a briefcase. He just said, just check. He said, the briefcase was documents. My mentor is rich. This Mentor is very rich. He said, when I saw money, he said, I collapsed at the table. He said, not that it was cash, but like shares, like documents. He said, Jesus. Those are the kind of friends you need. That when you do something, you're like, you're like my God. Friends that stretch you. Praise God. Um, recently, one of my friends came to the house. Two of them came to the house. And we were just talking. I was like, he's tired of traffic. Oh. He said, this is why he has a plane. He said, because in the morning, he lives in Texas. He said, I just take my plane, fly. He said, I fly to Florida, walk and come back. I pack my plane, go home. And the guy is just 33 years old. Ah, he said, that's the problem with this country. If I bring my plane now, where will I pack? He said, even when you pack the plane at the airport before you get to him, there's other traffic. I said, hey, so I'm thinking. You know, some of you don't know that they sell planes. <laughs> <laughs> that planes actually have price tag. That they sell them. Do you know they advertise planes on Instagram? Oh, you don't know. You, you've never seen those kind of pages before. We want you to see that when they are buying Gucci. <laughs> I'm telling you, planes advertise on this. I see it all the time. They advertise on Instagram. See, the thing is this, what you think is normal depends on the association you have. That's what I'm going to. What you think is, for example, if your friend tells you that we pray for three hours, eh, you didn't pray, oh. <laughs> he, he might, I have a circle of people, eh, <laughs> he said, please lend me a chair. Just give me a chair from the choir. Give me just give me those people can pray. Give me two chairs. This is how they pray. It's a circle of people. In fact, I didn't even call them. It's even one of them is Brother Olu. That's how I call him. But when they are praying, this is how they pray. They don't say stand up. They just like this. Just put their leg. Paika Sainama. Nine hours. Sai Makuni Mapali Makuri Saida. Panta Kuli Mataria. Know me, I always stand to pray. So I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I found my own chair. I said, I, I found this time. I said, there's something about this prayer that my kapako saliata. Ah. And they explained to me, said, when you're praying for long, you conserve energy. Yeah. And they told me, they said, we have been fasting for 40 days. He said, all we eat is white pap. Without sugar, without anything, for 40 days. And we eat it once in a day. So we don't have energy. He said, we just sit on the chair. Mind that Korea party, silent kaita. That's all. See, your association tells you what is normal and what's abnormal. If you want to change your taste, change your association. You want to change your spiritual taste, change your association. You want to change your physical change? Change your association. It's just change without rehearsal. Why? Your if God wants to grow you, He expands you by sending people into your life. And if the devil wants to shrink you, He shrinks you by sending people into your life.
Glory to God. I said glory to God. So when you pray, and this is wonderful. Why is relationship powerful? God uses men to build men. Hey! God uses men to build men. The question is this. If, who is the man that God uses to build you? A lot of people want pe- people to use. God says, this is what I do. I use men to build men. So, as a businessman, God uses another businessman to build you. God uses men to build men. Can you point, question, question. Can you point to two people that God uses to build you? And you want to grow. Ha. You don't grow by, you don't grow by rolling with the big boys. No. You don't go by the kitty kitty kata kata kitty. No, 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 no. You grow by looking for people to build you, sir. Someone say hallelujah. You're, you're in a career, you're in a banking career. Who is in that banking that is building you? You are in the media space. Who is there that is building you? You are in politics. Who is there that is building you? Everyone is built by somebody else. As a Christian, you're in this church. I think I've I know you are 10 years. Who is here is building you? I know the people that built me. I cannot remember the messages that changed me, but I know the people that built me. I know their names. I know what each of them did in my spiritual work. There's no I grew by myself Christian. No, sir. All of us are built by somebody. Listen to me. It was Barnabas that found Paul and raised him. It was Aquila and Sapphira and, and Priscilla that found Apollo and raised him. It was Elisha that found Elisha. Who is the person raising you? Silence. In the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's turn our Bible to Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17. And let's look at this very powerful scripture. Proverbs, you can take the chair, please. 27, verse 17. Someone say hallelujah. No, that's so weak. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ladies, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Brothers, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Those in the flow say hallelujah. Okay, that's just you're not listening. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 27, verse 17. See what it says. It said, iron sharpened iron. And the way life is, everybody has a way where you are dull. Some of you, your dullness is in finances. You are very handsome, but you are financially dull. Some of you, your dullness is in marriage. You are very pretty, but you are you are maritally dull. Some of you, your finance, your, your dullness is in career. You are very tall, handsome, but career-wise, you are dull. The way life is, everybody has an area at the door. So see what it says. How do I get rid of my dullness? He said, iron sharpened iron. The question that you are iron, do you have other iron around you? All you have is wood. Oh my God. Do you have others iron around you? What you have is wood. Because wood does not sharpen iron. It's iron that sharpens iron. He said, iron sharpened iron. So what? So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. So, if you are dull financially, you need a financial man to sharpen you. If you are dull in career, you need a career person to sharpen you. So, the reason why you don't have a cutting edge is that there's nobody that is what sharpening in that area. Glory to God. I mean, it's amazing. The other day I was reading, and Otelah said that, Dangote, my friend and my mentor. I said, ah, ah. Otelah is a billion in dollars. Look at Dangote and say, my friend and mentor, you are a thousand year. Mentor, you don't have. Kitty, kitty, cut, cut, You know, you, be doing, you want to roll with me, boy. No! Are you here? We are shouting you. Even the music industry, I've been on this, they raise one another. This person said, well, this person that picked me up, but that raised me. Who is raising you? And the reason I'm saying is that we have an independent generation that is good, but it can be destructive. Look at the next line. Still talking about raising. 
He said, he was on my relationship here. So a man sharpens what, when he says the counting of his friend, sharpens the countenance. The countenance means you sharpen the mind of your friend. So he says there, whosoever keeps the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. It's on my relationship still. It means that <laughs> any relationship you will eat of, it was, the fig tree is a metaphor. Any relationship you eat from is a relationship you keep. The problem is this. Most of you want to eat from a relationship you have not kept. Amen. So you see, after service, someone just walk up to me there and say, Pastor, please, if I don't get money, school fees right now, I will drop out of school. How much school fees? 150,000. What is 150,000 that we cannot give you? The question is that, do we know you? We don't know if you're a fraud star or a genuine star. We don't know. Because it's until you had problem, you came. Many of you are here. There are people in your life. It's when you need money, you remember them. The Bible says, look at the next verse. It says, whosoever keeps what? The fig tree shall eat what? He's the one that keeps the fig tree, not the one that dances around it. The boss responsible for your promotion. You will never say anything to him till appraisal time. He's waiting for you. He's waiting. The question, this is the question I want to ask you. This question, this, and this is a very important question. Hey, are you keeping the fig tree? Hey, are you keeping the fig tree? How does God grow you and give you breakthroughs? One of the ways God grows you is that it brings you a relationship that stretch your mind. I mean, I have friends that when they talk, I just sit down. You know, you know, me and Pastor just were talking. We have a mutual friend and um, the other time he had lost three billion. And I was instrumental in him, got using him to do that. But you know what? I was just fascinated how a human being can lose three billion and be sane. You just lose five hundred K. I know what you do. Glory to God. So the question is, has God used relationship to stretch your mind? Stretch you spiritually? I mean, I had a friend. I had a friend and he has preached here before. Some of you know him, Brother Talks. Brother Talks, the first time I met him, he just said, let's open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 1. And everybody opened and he didn't open. He said, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Thanks be unto God, verse 2. Verse 3, verse 4, from the head. Verse 5, verse 6, the whole chapter. Chapter 1, ch- chapter 2, verse, four, verse 3, verse 3. The second chapter, chapter 3, like that. He didn't miss. He missed one verse in chapter 3. He said, no, that's verse 17 that I quoted. Now, this is verse 16. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. When I saw that, I said, I don't know the Bible. Oh. I said, I don't know the Bible. Oh. You need people. You know, you're you saying I'm a solid leader. You need people that will stretch you as a solid leader. He said, we have, we have 10 members of what I, we did 15 many years ago. If you are the most successful amongst your friends, you need new friends. If you are the most spiritual amongst your friends, you need new friends. If you are the most ministry conscious amongst your friends, you need new friends. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. God uses relationship to train us. Did you, did you read the story of Esther? Esther did not want to be a queen. It was the person that trained Esther. That because there was no way Esther would have known there was a queen's pageant. But because Mordecai walked in the palace, his ear was on the crown. Mordecai was trained. Mordecai was trained. He knew what it took to be a queen. He had trained Esther for that place. Who is training you for where you are going? Everybody has potentials. But the people that shine on the field are those that have coaches. Everyone has potential, but the people that get on the field are those that have coaches. I read yesterday, Bill Gates said, I want to thank God for all the coaches I have in business. I said, Bill Gates has coach. 
who is a coach, the person that can get the result you want for you. Ah, th this is so powerful, really powerful. What God does with relationships. Look at Gehazi and Elisha. Very powerful story. At Gehazi's spiritual level, he should not be able, this is his level, he should not be able to see the spirit because his heart wasn't right. It was Elisha that had the capacity. So Gehazi said, Master, we are finished. They've surrounded us. And Elisha looked. Oh, man. And he said, ah, uh -uh, what do you see? He said, can't see the angels. Gehazi said, where? Oh. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. What he did was simple. Come, 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 come. Gehazi couldn't see anything. What he did was simple. All he did was, uh, ah, Elisha, um, Gehazi, you can't see. Elisha said, you can't see. Give me your hand. Let me take you to where you have not been before. He said, let the eye open. Instantly, what happened? His eyes opened. He didn't get there based on his own work. So he got there on the platform of what? Elisha. Where, where's that view? Yeah. This is, let me show you this. This is, this is what relationship does for you. This is what it does for you. The one that, you are, that is holding your hands no more and sees more than you. So he goes, ah, can you see those opportunities in oil and gas? No, I can't see anything. You can't see because at your level, it's not obvious to you. And let me tell you something, eh? When Satan wants to attack people, it blinds their mind. Second Corinthians 4, 4, let's look at it now. <laughs> Many of you, let me tell you something, eh? The thing is that your mind has been blinded, you cannot see. That's why you look at your business and say, it's over. You look at the business, you say, hey, it's over. Someone said, this is not over. You just started. Look at how. Second Corinthians 4, 4. Look at it. Let's look at it. Put the scripture on the screen. Where's the brothers at the back? I said, when Satan wants to attack people, one of the first things he does is what? It will blind their mind. See what the Bible says. Read. Let's read. What to go? In whom the God of this world has what? Blinded their mind, lest they believe. What? What? Let the light of the glorious gospel should shine. Watch this now. The light you need the business. What Satan does, it will blind your eyes. So you don't know what to do. The light you need to get mind, it will blind your eyes. You don't know what to do. He will just... So, what Satan does, he just blind... I'm like, I don't know what to do again. Oh, I'm talking about attack. This is what we mean about attack. Oh. Satan will blind your mind. You just say, the best thing for me to do is come to suicide. Uh -uh. How did this go to suicide? Because there's no light, you enter confusion. You look at the business and currently you have 100 million deficit. You're like, what should I do? You're like, the eye is blinded. And this is how you open the eye. See, the difference is that this is what happens. God will use somebody that can see. You cannot see and say, ah, no now, see what I'm showing you. Relationship what? Will open your eyes. That was why the, the Ethiopian Enoch was reading the book, going to Gaza. He read and read and read and read and read and read. Philip said, sorry sir. Understand what you read. He said, How will I understand if someone interpret to me? You can read about how to get funny to tomorrow until your eyes is open, you will not see it. All. You can read about marriage to next year until your eyes open, you will not see it. All. You can read about getting a job, you will not see it. All. The Ethiopian Enoch said, How will show, look for that scripture for me, please? He said, How will I see it except someone interprets this to me? In church, principles are taught. But when it comes to application, you need someone to hold your hand and say, this is it. Let's enter in this together. Thank you. Who knows what I'm talking about? Glory to God. Act chapter, what is that? 8 verse what? 27. 26. Act 8, 26. Many of you are here Acted. Many of you are here, you're wondering what's happening. It's, there's nothing wrong. You're just blind in business. You're just blind when it comes to funding. You're just blind when it comes to mind. You're just blind when it comes to parenting. And all you need is some son that can take off the veil and say, no, 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 no. This is how you do it. God uses relationship to open your eyes. The Bible says that in the book of Mark, Luke chapter 24, as Jesus was teaching, did he understand? The Bible says, and he, Jesus Christ, opened their understanding. Act 8, 20, 20. 
What? Act 8.30. Act 8.30. Act 8.30. Just read verse after this one. Let's quickly go. I want, I want us to finish this quickly. The Bible says, and Philip ran to him and said, and heard him, he was reading. Not that. <laughs> this, 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 this Bible. He was reading the book of Isaiah. And see, you'll be hearing the thing in church, hearing, hearing reading, you know, hey, ah, this is how you pray, you listen. What did he say? Understand the word I read. The next verse. Next verse. He said, how can I? Except some man should. See, some men are guides to you. That's what I'm going to. The reason why you are still single is that you have not submitted to your guide. Some men are guides. They are spiritual guides. They are business guides. They are financial guides. They are career guides. Do you have guides? The reason of God is for you not to get lost. If you go on a tourist prayer without a tourist guide, you will get lost. Some people are lost in their career because there's no guide. Lost! They don't even know where they're going to again. They are just stuck. Are you here? I say, are you here? So God uses relationship to what? To train and like your capacity. The second thing God uses relationship to do is this. God uses relationship to open doors. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you there? First Corinthians 16 verse 9. Please set up my goalpost. First Corinthians 16 verse 9. First Corinthians what? 16 verse 9. Let's read one to go. The Bible says, For a great and effectual door is open unto me, and there are what? The question is this. This is a question I want to ask you. Very good question. When it says a great door is open unto me, question, what is the door? Is it a physical door? No. Human beings are doors. How do I know? The animation she's talking about are also human beings. Uh, some human beings are doors. Some human beings are fence. Yeah. Some human beings are gates. In fact, when the Bible says, lift up your head to your gates, we understood this, eh? That gate means what? People in authority. Yes. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. Ah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, that's so. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. At the back, can I hear hallelujah? hallelujah? All right. Watch this now. Some human beings are doors. So what does doors do? Watch this. You go through doors. Watch this. Let me, everybody. I don't want to lose this because there are two things they are, but they are not the same thing. Some human beings are a resource. What's a resource? Support. You come to me, I help you. Some human beings are not resource. They are doors. What's the difference? A resource will come and give you what you want. That's a resource. A door doesn't have what you want. It only leads you to what you want. What does that mean? I'll explain what that means. So, you go for a cell meeting or you join a group. This guy is there. He's nobody valuable in who he is. One day you turn the cell meeting, I need a, I'm not surprised about my NFPC contract. I need to uh, interview with the director of this project in NFPC. As soon as the cell is over, the guy says, ah, which director is that? You mentioned it. Ah, really, that's his name. That's my father's best friend, actually. I even go to his house every Sunday. I didn't know you had contract there. Let's go together next Sunday. In himself, it was not a resource, yeah. but it was a door. Yeah. Because using him, you can now access. What most of you don't know is this. Most of you are looking for resource, but God is sending you doors first. And this is why you miss the help of God. Because as you say, Father, help me. Because you are looking for resource. But what God is sending you first is what? Doors. You are ignoring doors, looking for resource. Let me explain this. What this let me get deeper into this. Did you look at Neman? Neman was a leper. Who helped Neman? The house help, the slave girl, yes. Could the slave girl heal Neman? She was not the resource. Elisha was the resource, but she was the door. She was the one that said, I know a prophet in Israel. The problem is that most of you ignore open doors and you are looking for resource. And what's doing that sometimes is open door that points you to resource. They will say, come for singles men ministry. 
Come for men's fellowship, you enter there. You say, oh. Oh, because, because you are doing business in millions of dollars. You look, who is here? And step out. And you don't realize. You look at it. Come for a singles meeting. All the sophisticated ladies will get there. And they just look. I say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They just gauge their age. Look how they dress. Gauge their pocket. No husband here. Yes. <laughs> Carry that Louis Vuitton back. And take a walk. And they don't understand. That the person that was saying that. Sister will you sit down here. Has a senior brother. That is a resource. And the guy was defined by destiny to be the door. But because you are short-sighted, you look at door and not know what is inside door. Are, are you hearing me? You look at door, not know what is inside door. And you know why God gives you more than resources? Most times when God gives you resources, people make God out of resources. They will start worshipping resources. So God says, let me give you door so that you can know I'm the one that is doing it. So that your help can come from the most unpredictable sources. Sometimes in your office, the door can be the gate man. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, who knows what I'm talking about? It's the second thing that will tell you that, oh God, I saw a file and I saw your name there. It seems as if you're on probation list. Maybe you should discuss with madam. But for you to find that second thing, you must have a conversation. But many of you, oh, you are too high class. Good morning, you don't even answer. Because I'm a senior executive in this office. Meanwhile, it's one carrying your fight to be fired. Are you hearing me today? Are you, not, are you hearing me today? There are doors and there are what? Resources. Let me give some example. Let's just close. I don't know who was here. You were here during the ball. Yes, come. I need someone that can play ball. Please come to the other side and let's play ball. Stand over here. No, no, no. You, let you be over here. Just pass the ball to him. Sir, score. He can't score because he doesn't have ball. The way life is, eh? Sometimes your ball is not in your hands, somebody else's hands. No matter what you do, you cannot score. You, you, you score. You can't score. The, so why? Who has the door? Who has the ball? It's always an open door. Open door cannot score, but it can pass ball. Are you hearing me? Open door cannot score, but it can what? Pass ball. Let's open the pass ball. See, it passes ball to you. You break the ball. Ah. See the problem now. This when open door is giving ball and is not prepared. Then it takes the ball and takes it over. Ah. My brother, come over here. Be, be more prepared. Exactly. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. 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 And it's a goal. The question. This is a question. This is a question. You go back. No, just stay back. You just stay at your position. Don't do anything for me. Thank you. This is a question. This is a question. The word celebrate the person that's caused the ball. They forget the person that passed the ball. This is open door. The question is this. Who is meant to pass the ball to you? Do you know him? Are you connected? You are focused so much on scoring. Great strikers know. Even though I'm running into box 18, I keep looking at who is going to pass me the ball. Because without passing the ball, I can't score. You are so focused on your goal, you don't see who is passing you the ball. Are you hearing me? You know, they asked Yakini, Rashidi Yakini. I don't know if you know him. They said, Rashidi Yakini, such a good striker, gold scorer. Yakini said, Let's give her not a word on his deal. He said, There's one boy called George Finidi. Because George Finidi was a striker, was a midfielder that would pass to him. He said, Ah, Omokomo. He said, He can pass nonsense. He said, once he passes the ball, bam, next thing, go. Rashidi said, though I was calling, there was an open door somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, what relationship doors 
open the door. To score. Bring the ball for me. Thank you, sir. Put the ball here. If you have opened the door, this is not my consent to you. No, it's okay. Thank you. You can go. Once you know you have opened the door, you can't score. If you know you can't score, this is what people that have opened doors. They can't score, they will not keep the ball. And I'll be jimbling. And I'll be jimbling. And I'll be jimbling. My brother, you can't score. Pass the ball. Why are you not jimbling? Hey, 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 hey. We know you cannot score. Pass the ball. What do I mean? You cannot marry him. Pass him. Are you hearing me? The guy is here. Bring my ball from. Don't worry, my ball is here. Praise God. This guy we are talking about, the way your relationship is, you can't date him, you can't marry him. But instead of you to release him, you're like, hey, 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 my sister, pass him. Ah, let other sisters enjoy this glory. You stay with the guy. The sister, you will not marry, you will not toss, you will not release. You will just be blocking. Other people are coming. Hey, 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 hey. Release the sister. Pass it. You are already working in KPMG. You cannot get another job. There's opening. He's of you to take the job and post in the group that there's opening and just say, pass it. You will not pass it. And let me see what you don't know. By not passing, you lose your glory. <laughs> glory to God. It will cost you nothing to make the recommendation. Nothing. Look at him and say, pass the ball. Ah. You need to pass the ball. Pass the ball. Just pass it. Pass the ball. Instead, hey, 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 pass the ball. What will it cost you to put your mouth and say, that guy can pay back the loan, sir. Let's give it to him. Pass the ball. But the reason why you don't have is selfishness. What will he give me? Praise the Lord. You have a brother dating a girl. You know the girl is a good girl. Just to add what to your mother. Mom, that girl my mother is a very good girl. Oh. I've known her before. We attend the same cell. Very good girl. Mm. We'll not talk. Eh, 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 eh. Pass the ball. Pass the ball. Let me tell you, pass the ball. Let's close. Are you here? I say, are you here? Somebody say, hallelujah. Look at him and say, pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball. Say, when you get home today, tag some business person and say, pass. See, you don't understand. The big business to you that is not your line. All you do is catering. They say, cater for food. I say, do you know someone that sells drinks? I don't know anybody. But you know. You know someone that sells drinks. What will it cost? He said, I know somebody. Let me call her for you. Pass the ball. But he said, ah, that's not my business. So it's only food I normally do. Pass the ball. When you pass the ball to that they pass the ball back to you. Yeah. Are you here? There's someone in your estate, you trust this person goes to work every day and use public transport. You drive your car alone. Pass the ball. Ah, be the door. Say, join me. One day, not join me. I say, ah, by the way, oh, that fine girl is your friend. Pass the ball. What, what did she say? I, I should pass my own. Okay, let, let me pass. Let me pass it. I pass the ball. <laughs> Probably say hallelujah. So you pass the ball. Let's close. Did you notice that Naomi was a marital door? She couldn't marry Ruth, but she passed the ball. She said, Joas is here. Take 
when Peter's boat was sinking with fish, he said, one thing, either let the foe sink and we lose the fish, or I pass the ball. He called his partner. He said, come and help me pass the ball. Let other people succeed in your success. Someone say hallelujah. Let's close with this. So God uses relationship to open doors. So question, what doors have you been praying for that God has opened to relationship, but you do not know? The next week will be very fiery. This message, you need to send to all your friends on social media and tell them to go and watch this. Is that not true? Yeah. yeah. There are three kinds of friendships and we'll begin to close from here. Three types of friendships. One, and this is the problem. Everyone look up here. When people say, people have shown me I don't trust people, this is a problem. People put all No. They're different kind of friends. The first thing is that your friends is your your colleagues. You are functional friends. We, we work in the same space. I don't understand how you now fight with your husband and now go and tell the person. And the person is, but this is what we do. We don't talk to the best person to talk to. We talk who's available. Yeah. Go and catch your friends. Just friends that we just know. We meet by function. The second category is what? Close friends. These close friends, if you have them, you are lucky. You can't have more than 20. These are friends that you know them and they know you. You can depend on them to a certain degree. A certain, not a lot, a certain degree. You can tell them few things, not a lot of deep things. And the third category are your core friends. These are the friends that they are there for you and you are there for them. These are the friends that you want to divorce, they come to their house with their spouses and say, are you mad? What did they do for you? He said, it's not my life. He said, it's not your life, oh. It's our life together. Didn't all of us go and prostrate? He said, don't talk to me. He said, don't talk to me. He said, I can beat you up. What's it? Call friends. These are friends that when they say that your wife has cancer, they say cancer. They and their wife together. Shaba, bara, shaga, bara. Eight hours, they are still there. Your mother says, what are these? You say, those are my prayer warriors. They are not friends that you talk to and you hear somewhere else. Oh. They are friends when you talk to them, you hear it in heaven. Because they are for you, once they enter the, the next place is heaven. Are these the kind of friends you have? You, you, your friends are on, for grams. <laughs> no wonder when your problem happens, we see it on gram. <laughs> because your friends are for gram, so you have problem with what? We sit on gram. These are friends that when you have, you enter the business challenge, lost 50 million, they will call themselves together. Six of them is there. If these guys enter shame, we enter shame. Let's get out this one and say it. They come together and say, this is 30 million, look for the rest for you. You say, ah! So I say, I'm looking for those kind of friends. You don't look for them, you build them. How do you build them? Everybody starts as a casual friend. The more they do what they move towards a close friend. The more they do what they move towards a core friend. So you can't just see someone say, hey, you know what I After one month, my bestie, you will soon be bested. From bestie to rested, you will be rested. Heartbroken in a tangible way. One month is bestie. What, 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 what's bestie there? The person even is a sub-casual friend, not even a casual friend. He's a sub-casual friend. They, you test them, you test them, you test them. Praise God. Let's close. I've not finished, but this is what I want to say to you. Please go online. I gave the five steps to choosing relationships online. You can find, I can't clock up in this service. I've, co- I've taken so many time to cover. Is that okay? The first step I said in the, on, in the five steps is this, the first step. You can go online on YouTube and watch it fully. The first step I said was this. Before you choose the first two steps, before you choose a friend, okay, you can see there. Yes. Half friendship, half relationship goals. You know why? Amos 3 3. Can two work together except they agree? If you don't have a goal, you don't know who to choose. If you don't have a goal, you don't know who to choose as your core friend. So, and when you have a goal, your friendship should be based on your goal. And the second thing is that you've got to be intentional. Intentional. What's intentional? 
I'm not just choosing friends anyhow. I'm choosing based on purpose. Praise the Lord. So you can go and watch. I will explain the next five steps. Just go to the message. Click the last part and watch it. And that will bless you. Were you blessed today? Let's start up and pray.